I still am certain, um, personally, because the information that I read in the evaluations, um, the information that I received in, in the reading, um, showed that he understood that the act itself was a wrongful act. Um, as far as knowing and understanding what he was doing, um, from what I read, it seemed like um, he was kind of referring to it uh, when he spoke with his girlfriend, something to the effect of, um, uh, forgive me for what I'm going to do tonight, or you'll find out, something to that effect. Which leads me to believe when I read that, that um, there was some uh, poor thought about what he was going to actually do. Um, and there were some statements about um, he had read uh, that if, if he were to commit, commit some, um, some kind of significant uh, something, um, that he would buy a, a, day, um, a day out of hell or something to that effect, um, which kind of, to me, points at, well, there's, there's a reason why he would do something like this. Understanding that, yes, it is a pretty atrocious thing to do. Um, again, he's, he doesn't provide any of the specifics, so um, I don't, you know, in my interview, he, he didn't. So these are based on things that I'm reading in the other interviews and with her interview. When you did this report, did you have information from his family that at one point he was afraid of the rain and felt that if the rain touched him, he would die? I don't remember reading that. Okay. Hypothetically, if you'd had that information, would that have been important to you in making your decision here? I think it would add to it would add to um, the belief that there was some psychotic process going on. Okay. Given the information I just gave you about him being afraid to be touched by rain, and adding that to fact that your conference with him was terminated early and that you really needed four or five, three or four more sessions with him to finish your evaluation. And adding to that the information from the girlfriend that you didn't have, if you put all that together, is that information you would really need to have a Reliable evaluation, Mr. Bissetto. I think, I think that would that scenario would provide the most thorough evaluation. Okay. Meaning that the evaluation that you were able to do was something less than thorough. Yes, and I, I would say the same thing for the other two evaluations that I read. Now he denied hearing voices during the interview, correct? Yes. You went over substance abuse uh, history? Yes. He indicated they smoked cigarettes daily. Mm -hmm. He told you he would binge drink on the weekends. Mm -hmm. He said he smoked marijuana daily. Mm -hmm. And he told you he used the designer drug Spice several times? Yes. Part of your mental status evaluation, you indicated that he was, uh, or, sorry, uh, he was well groomed. Mm -hmm. There's no motor disturbances. What's a motor disturbance? So if they're overly agitated, um, a lot of times psychotic patients will have very stereotypic movements, so to speak, where kind of they almost look like they're robots. Um, uh, a lot of stiffness, things of that nature. Um, he was, he looked, for all intents and purposes, normal. 